how we can avoid the ethnic conflict in Ethiopia, how we can uh, transform a society which is based on several ethnicities uh, without going through the turmoils that are associated with this kind of transfigurations. Now let's understand what is happening in Ethiopia. First of all, uh, spring last year, in 2018, brought some changes in several countries. Coincidentally, it uh, brought changes in Armenia, my ethnic country, uh, where Prime uh, Minister changed and new Prime Minister came with a revolutionary movement, which was called the Velvet uh, Revolution. Until now it is called Velvet Revolution. I don't know how the historians will characterize it. Same time in Malaysia, another uh, movement happened that brought into power uh, an old figure, 93 years old, uh, Mahathir Mohammed, who was the prime minister at a certain time in the past, and now he came again to power. Same time, even earlier, in April, in Ethiopia, a change happened in the ruling party and a new figure came. Nobody knew much about him. He is Abay Ahmed. Now he is an iconic figure for the Ethiopian uh, population, well-known personality even now outside, outside Ethiopia because he can be a really historical figure. He can achieve to Ethiopia uh, what uh, others couldn't achieve, what other leaders couldn't achieve to their nations even. So what is the background of Ahmed, Mr. Ahmed, the Prime Minister? Abiy Ahmed is uh, effectively, he is not a newcomer because he belongs to a ruling party, a party that was ruling Ethiopia uh, since the 1991 when the old regime was changed and a new party came. The official name of the party is very long. I mean, it is called the Ethiopian Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front. It is a coalition of uh, leftist uh, parties, each party coming from a certain region. Four parties together, each one coming from a certain region, major region of Ethiopia, form together this front. So you can imagine which parties are these, the four parties. One is related to the Amhara region, so it is called Amhara Democratic Party. The other is related to the Oromo region. This is why it is called the Oromo Democratic Party. The third one is related to a region called Tigray. So this is why it is called the Tigray People's Liberation Front. And the fourth party that forms this coalition comes from a vast area. Uh, which is collectively is called the Southern Nations, Nationalities and Peoples Region. The, the major political party there, which is part of this uh, leftist coalition that uh, I mentioned, is called officially the Southern Ethiopian Peoples Democratic Movement. So these four similar parties with the same ideology, but each one tailored on their ethnic component that represent that major areas of Ethiopia, they form together this uh, ruling party uh, and they controlled Ethiopian political life since 1991 uh, until the, this day. Uh, Abe Ahmed is officially the head of this party and same time he is the head of his regional ethnic uh, unit which is called party which is called Oromo Democratic Party. So it basically uh, comes from the Oromo region, which is a geographically vast area, a landlocked area. Ethiopia itself is landlocked. Oromo is a landlocked area within a landlocked uh, country. And it represents uh, the first in number of the ethnic population in Ethiopia, more than 30 30 million population compared to the second ethnic uh, group, which is the Amhara population, which is uh, more than 25 million. 
Ethiopia that we are talking now about is a country that has doubled it, its population since 1991 when the ruling party came. Can, can you imagine a party that came into power just 27 or 29 years ago and within this period of time the population has doubled from merely something like 45 million now it's uh, almost it's more than 100 million so this uh, this is a challenge it's a huge challenge especially in a changing world especially uh, that this party didn't uh, inherit anything particular Ethiopia was a uh, the so-called Democratic uh, Republic of uh, Ethiopia, the old regime was uh, uh, almost, you can say, a Stalinist style uh, government. This ruling party inherited a case from the old regime and because of that it, it was involved into a war with the Eritrean uh, neighbors, which effectively they were part of the same republic but the old regime couldn't retain them, couldn't create such uh, a background that can uh, retain and keep the Eritreans inside the Ethiopian uh, Republic, the Ethiopian political system. Now, are the other ethnicities also uh, are they inclined to follow this path of the Eritreans? Are they going to uh, secede uh, and they are going to go out from this unity? If we will compare the Ethiopian uh, example with the old Yugoslavian uh, paradigm, we will see that uh, there might be this kind of uh, direction. The, the, the basis is there. Why Yugoslavia dismantled? Because the regions uh, were not administrative only, they were also based and tailored on ethnic groups, nationalities and people living in a certain land that was associated with a certain ethnicity. So when in Yugoslavia we were saying the Croatian part, Croatia, it, uh, it was related to the Croatians. So anyone who is of Serbian ethnicity living there, uh, effectively even if he was living there for generations, Still, his ethnicity is not associated with the land, with the territory. The same uh, might happen in Ethiopia. Uh, this is what we will be discussing. Is it going to lead there? How this evolves? Evolves in a very simple way. When you define certain borders and you name and certain areas with the name of the ethnicities there. So what happened? The, the minorities which are there for generations, and sometimes they are the original people, uh, they start disassociating themselves from the political system. And they are also automatically uh, are considered as a second uh, category citizens inside their own region. So effectively, this can evolve, and within generations, uh, the tension uh, starts to become very visible, I mean, uh, and movements can come and political figures start also speculating on this and they start making a political uh, life based on these findings that anyone, let us say, you are from Orom origin and you are of Am Amhara ethnicity. In that region, automatically, by time, you become a second category citizen if the political system goes to the ethnic direction. So, uh, and then effectively, it will come time that the Oromo population will consider you as a uh, someone as a dangerous element and someone who is a uh, occupying positions that uh, belong to this uh, their own uh, ethnic uh, group grouping so you cannot elevate in the uh, political system there in that same particular region you cannot occupy a place in the parliament or sit there in the uh, political uh, picture you cannot have a certain place there unless if you are supported from the uh, uh, 
central government. So what becomes this kind of support uh, also will be seen as an, an intervention in the politics of the region, of the area. So automatically, uh, this on the political level, but this can also have an uh, impact on the popular level. So because uh, you will be allocated certain lands, certain uh, privileges, certain uh, additional rights because of belonging of that certain ethnicity, then uh, you will feel disadvantage. Either you will leave voluntarily the region and go to a place that is more associated to your name and ethnicity, or you will be forced out sometimes with uh, violence. So what is happening now in Ethiopia, that there are almost one million and more people who are politically and internally displaced by force. I mean that some ethnicities have forced other ethnicities outside the borders that define the, uh, each ethnicity's political uh, entity. So, uh, can, uh, can this stop? Uh, can this stop? Uh, there are no uh, signs that this can stop at, at, at this moment because the same reasons that created this tension and violence and this sometimes could, could, could have bloody consequences is continued. Uh, the same uh, people who have forced others to come out and this doesn't uh, mark a certain one ethnicity. It can happen in the other regions also. Uh, this uh, is, a, is, a, is a course that should be stopped. But how can uh, a government headed by Abe Ahmed uh, take action here? I mean, the, the constitution uh, forces uh, Ethiopia to remain ethnocentric, ethno uh, regions based on ethnicities. So the, the lucky thing about uh, Ethiopians is that the, the bond that they have within the same country, the Ethiopian bond is not uh, as weak as uh, it was in the Yugoslavian case. It's not completely artificial. Actually, it has strong roots and uh, the, to belong to Ethiopian uh, Republic or nation as a whole is something that almost we can say the majority of the people cherish it and they uh, represent themselves everywhere, wherever you go, as Ethiopians. And then if you have certain uh, relationship with any individual, uh, then uh, he or she finds the time uh, when he, he or she will express uh, about his uh, or her ethnical background, the language that uh, is inherently spoken inside the household, and all these things. This uh, was not the case in Yugoslavia, uh, because the Yugoslavian entities, political, Croatia, Serbia, and all these, they existed before the formation of the uh, Yugoslavian state. And they uh, were forced somehow, some of them, to enter into this Yugoslavian unity under the ideological context and within the uh, overall Cold War situation and uh, the political uh, situation that existed after the World War II uh, when uh, there was a vacuum and there was also a winning uh, party, the communists that uh, they came into the power and they were supported by a superpower like the, at that time the Soviet Union. Although it was not complete direct support but at least it was on the ideological basis. So this doesn't exist in the case of Yugoslavia, uh, Ethiopia, uh, because the Ethiopian Empire uh, is older than Yugoslavia and when it started and, and when it conquered all these lands and uh, uh, it came into reality, uh, it didn't destroy certain states, it didn't uh, eliminate certain existing political powers there. There were some, of course, uh, local uh, authorities. Uh, which were subjugated, but uh, the, they didn't have this uh, statehood 
before the Ethiopian Empire and uh, they, they uh, somehow at least the elite of this uh, ethnicity they adopted the culture the dominant culture at that time which still continues now in the form of the Amhara uh, language and the culture related to the Amhara uh, people so this is a important uh, difference uh, that uh, you can uh, differentiate the Ethiopian case from the uh, Yugoslavian case. Also another important uh, difference is that uh, the geographical setting of the regions inside Ethiopia are so peculiar <laughs> that uh, each nation or area cannot uh, be politically and geographically independent and doesn't have this support from neighboring countries. For example, uh, Oromo, which is the biggest uh, nationality, is even landlocked inside Ethiopia. So it is not surrounded with other foreign countries. And even if it has uh, some borders, which in this case there isn't, let us say the other areas which have uh, some borders with the foreign countries, these foreign countries or neighboring countries are not in a position to support any cessation of these uh, regions or areas, are not part of this. Uh, they are so weak and so uninterested about the Ethiopian case and not related historically. Uh, in Yugoslavia, the case was different. You know, in, there were the questions that were there uh, because of their religion, they were very close to the uh, German population in the South Germany, Bavarian area, and the uh, Serbians, which were very close to the, uh, let us say, Russian uh, influence, and uh, also other areas inside Yugoslavia, which were identifying themselves more with the Islamic identity, like in the Kosovo, and even next to Kosovo, there was the Albania, which is ethnically the same ethnicity, and all these things. Things. So it, the international influence and uh, was very uh, obvious in the case of uh, Yugoslavia, and we shouldn't forget that it was a certain time when the world, uh, the world was going through very big changes from the uh, at the end of the Cold War. So each one didn't know how this was going to end, and uh, each country didn't know how its own influence was going to expand or shrink inside Europe, including also the European Union, which was a player at that time, the major, but there were also the two superpowers, US and uh, the Soviet Union, dismantling Soviet Union and the new Russian state that was coming on the political scene. They didn't know how to uh, form the how what kind of spheres of influence they will have in the new states in the new countries and each one tried to grab a part that can be con loyal to its uh, doctrine in the future so this kind of thing doesn't exist in ethiopia uh, we can say even ethiopia has the moral advantage that it is the headquarters of the african union so uh, and it has been historically uh, independent no colonial power had the uh, opportunity to occupy uh, the country of Ethiopia altogether. Only the Italians, they managed to occupy several months or one or two years and with huge difficulties and they never uh, managed to establish the, themselves there uh, in the country. So it has the, it represents the African identity with its purest and the most representative form. This is why it's not coincidence that a lot of African countries look into the Ethiopian example and they want to learn from it. Therefore, the Ethiopians have an extra burden, moral burden, uh, not to give a bad example, to learn from the example of other nations and also to provide something that can be useful to other African nations that go through this kind of phases because we know that there are some other countries uh, in Africa that have uh, different ethnicities, different linguistic groups, different uh, uh, political uh, ideologies, a lot of international and uh, global influences happening there. So Ethiopians, uh, given these parameters that I mentioned, 
they uh, can really uh, go from this phase to another phase and become a leading power in Africa with their uh, politics, with their culture and with their uh, the way that they express their identity in the right form within the African continent and also on international global level because whatever happens in Ethiopia can have also uh, implications in other countries outside Africa so because the issue of ethnicities within one state is not also is not uh, restricted to uh, one country uh, thank you and hope this will be a beginning of other subjects related to Ethiopia because I think this is a fascinating country and really deserves everyone's attention. Thank you.